in studio right now from the New York State Police is Dave Olney. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me if you uh, if you would here. Um, this was brought up the other day, and I, I guess it was Wayne who called in and said, "I don't know what's going on. Every time I turn around, somebody's getting out of their car, and I'm and I'm smelling pot in the in the car as they get out of their car." I witnessed it just the other day. Uh, you could literally see a puff come out of the car when the door yeah. opened. So <laughs> clearly, that is uh, that is against the law. Sure, no different than. Popping your uh, top on your Budweiser, mm-hmm. drinking that when you're driving down okay. the road, there's no difference. Yeah. So, well, there is one difference that marijuana is not legal yet. Correct. Right. Um, what if you had medicinal? Right now in New York State, there's no there's no um, smoking medicinal marijuana. Okay. Right now, and here's the thing: if whether it's whether it's uh, medicinal, and, and we'll talk about impairment. Okay. Um, because marijuana is just one of thousands of different drugs that can impair you sure so whether it's alcohol or marijuana or anything else you can take hydrocodone you can take um certain prescription medications antidepressants all those things within what's called uh, a therapeutic dose Mm -hmm. and you're okay you're okay to drive you're okay to function when you get outside of that therapeutic dose whether it's let's say you have a medical marijuana card and you're able to take marijuana yeah yeah. if you're outside of that therapeutic dose and you're impaired to any degree you can't drive a car can't drive uh, which is why you'll see um, certain medicines say do not operate uh, vehicles uh, or any heavy I forget machinery, the heavy yeah. machinery yeah. or anything like that. So uh, it is a little trickier, though, is it not, to to test? Is there a breathalyzer test? There is not. And it is, it is trickier, and it's not trickier. Um, like I said a minute ago, the bottom line is impairment. Yeah. So that officer, when they encounter this person that has either been pulled over or crashed their vehicle, and they feel they're impaired. They give them the exact same field sobriety test they would for alcohol, okay. and they use the exact same criteria to score that, whether that person is able, impaired or not impaired, or intoxicated or not intoxicated, and then they get arrested. When they come back and they take the breathalyzer, and their level of intoxication is not consistent with the level of impairment. So if they blow a 0.5 and they look like somebody who's a 1.5 or a yeah, 2.0, yeah. That we, you know, we've all seen that really mm-hmm. bad drunk. Then they call what's called a drug recognition expert in, and we come and take about a 45-minute to an hour evaluation of this person and determine whether or not they're impaired. Can they? Uh, what happens um, if they say, I'm sorry, you do not have the right, I'm not giving you the permission to, to take my blood? Yep. When you operate a vehicle in New York State, whether you have a license or not, whether you're from another state or not, you, you're what's called implied consent. Um, you've implied that the the for the asking for probable cause that a police officer can take your blood, breath, urine, or saliva. You can refuse that under certain circumstances. And if you do refuse that, it's another charge. And usually it's a it's a civil hearing in the Department of Motor Vehicles. And usually the punishment for that is more severe really? than the original charge. So You, you know, on, 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 the, on the web, there's this uh, guy out of Florida that, uh, and I've had him on the radio before, that says, do not open your window. Uh, oh, yeah. Do not. Uh, you got to hold up a card that says you, this is against Am my being constitutional Am rights. Am I being detained? Yeah. You just keep uh, asking that question over yeah, and over. Yeah, that uh, that doesn't work. Doesn't work so well, does it? Work. No. <laughs> no. There's there's case law that that if if we stop you for a lawful reason, we have a we have a, 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 a basically an expectation that you're going to give us your identification and yeah. your proof of insurance and registration for the vehicle and things like that. So Now, th- that goes along with the privilege of being a driver, right? Yes. It's different than approaching someone on the street and saying, give me this, give me this, give me this. You're yep. driving, so you have some responsibility to comply with your requests. Yeah. You were, people forget that. You were actually licensed to do this. It's right, like practicing right. law or medicine. You're licensed. You've earned the right to do this, the, the privilege to do this. It's not a right. So if you don't have that license, then you can't. You, you don't have an expectation that you're able to legally do that act. So, And what happens when, uh, you, and I've, somebody was just talking about this the other day, that they'd driven, they were on their property, and they told police they could not come on their property, and they did. Do you Obviously, if you see something, a police officer sees something, you then have the right. You don't need a... Well, a no, there, there are a lot of cases, in most cases, we need to follow 
well, all cases we need to follow the law, but there are times when they're in exigent circumstances, if there's something that, that it's it's an emergency and we need to access that property, we yeah. can. But in most cases, we're going to have to get a search warrant. you got to get a search warrant. Yeah. Yeah. If it's in plain view, if it's outside the house, whatever, but we can't just walk into somebody's house. Here's one, one more that uh, that I've had thrown at me is um, – uh, you're, so you're, you're in a fender bender, um, and, uh, you've been drinking, get to somebody's house and just start chugging vodka or, or whiskey, uh, and well, you'll be, and then they, you would say, I wasn't drinking before I was, uh, I just had a drink now. That's some bad advice too. And it does yeah. make the case more difficult to prosecute, yeah. Yeah. but alcohol, al- alcohol is a known substance is a known factor and we know how long it takes to get in the body we know how long it takes the body to eliminate it so the body can eliminate 0.015 percent bac per right. hour so if you run in a house and you say i just had two beers and we test you and you're two five right then okay we, can, make we can take those two beers out of the equation yeah. and yeah. you're still way well over the limit uh finally i want to ask you um because people who are ra- especially somebody who smokes marijuana often um, will tell you I, I can drive without a problem. It doesn't impair me at all. Have have there been tests done on impairment and associated with marijuana use? There have been a lot of studies. In effect, uh, if you look at what's going out in uh, Colorado and uh, Washington and Oregon right now, um, they're finding out the hard way that yeah, it does yeah. it does impair. The fatalities are going through the roof. In a lot of cases, a lot of studies I read, they more than doubled. Hmm. Um, so so. Consumption of drugs impairs your judgment, impairs your ability to think correctly and to, into into your motor function and things like that. And people with impaired judgment think their judgment's okay. Right, right. So that you know, kind of a I can drive. Yeah, I'm an amazing yeah. driver. Listen, I know a guy who got a you know uh, whatever they what, what is it DUAI what There's is it? DWAI drugs. Yeah, he got one. He. The dead giveaway, though, he's doing 25 and a 45. So. <laughs> That's what did it. Uh, Wayne, uh, you're on with Dave only. Go ahead, Wayne. Hey, a couple, couple of questions. Um, all right, what what happened? Are they ever going to do stuff? I'll, I'll, I'll give you the two questions, and I'll let you guys go. Okay. Um, if you are um, caught, say, smoking, and you have children in the car, what happens? And are you guys ever going to do, like, um, set up roadblocks? Like they do for DWIs and stuff like that on the holidays. Not, not that I'm against it, I'm not approved. I just don't. I don't. I just don't know why if it's um if it's legalized, just like uh, alcohol, that why you're able to just smoke in carloads of people and just keep driving. Because I, I remember hitting somebody one time when I was high, and I didn't kill them, but I ended up hitting the back of the car because we were messing around, and uh, luckily nothing really bad happened. Yeah. But it was because we were high. But, um, yeah, go ahead and uh, all right. give okay. me that answer. All right. that. Uh, Thank you. Dave, Thank you. first of all, you're, if you do a check, as a DWI check, you're, you're also checking for exactly. anything else, right? Exactly. So we're going to continue doing what we do, um, and we do regular checks where we check for uh, yeah. impaired drivers, mm-hmm. and that's not going to stop. And whether it's impaired by drugs or alcohol or anything else, um, we're going to continue that. So to answer that question, yes, we're not going to do anything differently because the, the bottom line of what we're trying to find is the same. Uh, ultimately, safety. Be yeah. safe. Yep. You know, and and I want to thank Wayne for calling me. I had me shouting on my radio the other morning on my way home from work. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was yelling at the radio, and that was a great phone call and some great observations he's made. Because one of the issues right now with legalization, and I'm not going to debate whether it should be legal yeah, or not. Yeah. There, there, are, there are merits to both sides of the argument that I can't, I can't disagree with. It's coming. And it's no different than alcohol right now. And, and, and when we had this big issue eight, ten years ago with bath salts and mm-hmm. things like that, yeah. people would, would be driving, they'd be doing crazy stuff, and they'd say, well, it's legal. You can't do anything to me. Well, just like alcohol is legal. It you could be cough medicine. Yeah. Uh, it could be anything that's <clears throat> impairing your driving. And that's, that's legal. Alcohol is legal. But you yeah. can't drink a bunch of alcohol and drive your car. Right. So it, there's no difference. And, and the, the big problem they're having out west is people can't make that differentiation. They don't understand that, that yeah, it's legal, but I still can't do certain things when I'm using Correct. it. Correct. Alcohol is legal. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Dave, we appreciate it always. Thank you. The voice of reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good stuff.